In this video, I'm going to explain to you how we can analyze and take structural measurements from a three-dimensional virtual 3D outcrop. So this is how we can essentially go virtually into the field and take our strike and dip measurements of planar and linear features. Today I'm going to be using this software called Virtual Reality Geological Studio or VRGS. This is a paid for software so you do have to subscribe however it is not as expensive as some other software so it's relatively accessible. There's also a 30 day trial so you can try this out as part um, of this field trip. There are many other softwares which do the same kind of thing. Lime is one of the softwares which also um, I believe you have to pay for, although there are also some free options with that as well. But today I'm going to be doing a demo using this VRGS software. And I'm going to be going to Bude. So we are going to be focusing on the area of the Bude whaleback, which I'm showing you in this slightly zoomed out three dimensional drone model. I should say now that all of this drone imagery is courtesy of David Peacock. So David Peacock has given me his um, 3D drone models, which I'm going to be analysing. So we're going to be focusing in on this part of the Bude whaleback, which is the same part that I have been in the field to look and describe. So when we open up VRGS, this is what it looks like. What we can do is we can put in these three dimensional mesh models from drone or other photogrammetry. They do take a little while to load, but once they're in here, then we can manipulate and zoom around it's slightly slower than some of the online versions, but we can go around and have a look at these outcrops. And you should recognize this, not only from the previous, slightly more zoomed out model, but also from some of the field photographs and videos. The model is imported as a geo-referenced OBJ file. That means that it retains its real geographical coordinates and location and orientation. So we can see there's this north arrow showing that north is over to the right hand side of the screen. So we're looking sort of along this axis of this fold, which is roughly east west. And we can see that there are also sort of uh, real measurements. And as well as that, we can put a scale onto our model. So here I've just put a five meter scale. We can see in, um, in real space how large and the orientation of the model. The great thing about these types of software is we can take structural measurements and we can actually digitize our 3D outcrop. So there's a variety of different interpretation tools that we can use to interpret these um, 3D models, including various um, sedimentology, structural geology, and other types of um, analyses. Today, I'm just gonna focus on the structural geology options. So with VRGS, we can take strike and dip measurements from a three-dimensional mesh surface. We can do that by either defining three points on our mesh or several points or an area in order to take a strike and dip. So what I'm going to do now is I've set this so I can put multiple points on my model and it will take a strike and dip um, from that surface. So I can zoom in on an area. I'm going to first of all focus on the northern limb of the fold. So what I can do is define an area that I want the software to take a strike and dip. And if I double click, then you'll see it's put a disc with a strike and dip symbol. This is the dip. Well, actually what it is going to, what it's going to show me in a second when I click on it is the dip and dip azimuth. I'm just showing you now that as it's done this, it's not always perfect. So you do 
with any of these things, when we're in the field, there's a certain amount of human error when we take strike and dip measurements. When we're using software to take strike and dip measurements from 3D surfaces, we need to accept that there is a certain level of uncertainty which is going to go on, and some of the uh, disks don't always fit the data very well. So we can adjust these, we can redo them if we're not happy with them. But we can see that that disk is sitting on that bedding surface as I sort of manipulate around. And when I click on that measurement that I've just taken, what I can see is my dip, which is 49 degrees, and my dip direction. So it's not giving me a strike and dip, it's giving me a dip and dip direction. So 49 degrees towards 345. When I was in the field, I took a structural measurement of the northern limb of the viewed whaleback, and I got a strike and dip of, um, my strike was 078, and my dip was 42 degrees to the north-northwest. So that would be equivalent of a dip, dip direction of 42, 348. So it's very similar to my digitized strike and dip. So let's go round now to the other side of the fold and let's do the southern limb and then we can again compare with some of the measurements that I took in the field. So you can see that the southern limb is slightly asymmetric, it's not dipping um, quite as steeply. Let's go sort of down to the beach level, this is roughly where I took the measurement when I was in the field. And again, I can define an area so I'm just clicking and then finally double clicking to finish and it will make my strike and dip disc and we can see that it's fitting pretty well to that mesh, mesh surface and when I click on that strike and dip or dip sorry and dip azimuth it's we've got a dip of 27 degrees towards 150. That is slightly different from what I measured in the field so in the field, I measured a dip of 33 degrees, which was dipping towards 165, but it was probably in a slightly different area. So what I can do now is I can cover my digitized outcrop in structural measurements to try and get a really detailed idea about the overall strike and dip of the different limbs. I've now digitized a series of orientation data all on the bedding, so all focused on the bedding from all over the whaleback. And you will have seen as I was doing that, I was sort of checking that they were fitting well the meshed surface. I probably could have been slightly more careful, but any that were clearly a bit spurious, I was deleting as I was going along. So you can see that you could get very carried away and you could do hundreds, thousands of measurements even. So you, you kind of have to decide how many is, is um, practical, how long you've got to do this. I sort of focused on either ends of the fold and some sections in the middle. I have, as I said, just digitized the bedding right now, but I could also, if I wanted to, digitize the joints. So we can see from this lovely bird's eye view, we can see the joints really clearly. We can see how they are oriented around the fold. And actually we can get a much better perspective than when we're in the field because we can zoom in and out. We can see what the overall trends of the data are. And then we can also zoom in and see some of the detail as well. So once we've digitized these um, planar features, which as I said before, are showing us dip 
and dip azimuth or dip direction for each of these um, each of these measurements. We can then export as a table, so as a comma separated value table. And when we do that, if we open it up, um, I was having a glitch just now when I was doing this. I couldn't get it to label the um, the data, but I've worked out what it is by comparing with the uh, data and basically got the XYZ coordinates of each one of our measurements. And then we've got the dip, the azimuth and the uncertainty on that measurement as well, which is really useful. So what we can do is use this to make a stereonet, which I would say for a separate video. The final thing I want to show you is that we can also digitize linear data. It's quite difficult to measure the fold axis and the fold axial surface of a fold when we're in the field. That's because sometimes we can't get a perspective on the entire fold. Perhaps there's going to be an axial planar cleavage, which we can use to digitize the axial plane, um, but it can be tricky. So often it's easier to and more accurate to actually calculate the fold axis by using a stereo net. We can measure the fold axis from our model exactly the same as um, with our strike and dip data. So we're going to use this plunge tool. And with the plunge tool, what we can do is just by um, clicking, we can digitize any linear features. So what I've done is I've just picked that um, fracture there because I'm pretty sure it's, it's going down the center of the fold. Now it's probably easier to measure this fold axis from this digital model rather than um, in the field because we can zoom in and out. We can try and see how representative we're being. There's still a level of uncertainty and it's really important when we're digitizing data from models such as this that we um, that we do our best to remember that uncertainty. But we can we can take measurements sort of all the way along the fold and use that data to try and get an idea of how the fold axis changes as we go along the whale back. We can again export that data, including those fold axis um, values, and we can use that to make a stereo net of our data. So I think there are advantages and disadvantages of doing this kind of digital mapping. The advantages are we can potentially look at outcrops that are inaccessible, that we are not able to get to for various reasons, and we can generate a lot of data. And statistically, sometimes it's better to have a large number of measurements so we can see the variation in outcrops rather than just a few very careful detailed measurements, which is what we would do in the field. And I think a combination of both of these things, so going into the field, taking measurements of certain areas yourself, and then using drone models or other 3D models, collecting much larger data sets to see statistically some of the trends that we see in these data. So I think it, as we move forward in structural geology, there's going to be more of this combined approach of having both field and virtual outcrop data. You can see how it's relatively fast and easy and accessible to do these kind of measurements. And um, you do have to be careful. You have to think about the uncertainty. You have to think about the potential problems with your data set. That's why I said there's advantages and disadvantages of this approach. And always keep a sort of critical um, eye out uh, when you're doing this uh, digitization. But overall, we can get a nice digital data set of all of our structural measurements, which we can then use to do further analysis, such as plotting on a stereo net.